finished Monday uh, morning cardio, uh, not exactly morning, it's about 20 past 4 p.m. rather than a.m., screw that. <laughs> um, so yeah, we just, uh, we just had a little play, did a little ski um, in combination with a couple of other things. So we got the uh, hollow rocks in there, walking lunges, just body weight and some back extensions. So it was pretty good, five rounds, uh, felt good, felt strong. was thinking the ski would be a little bit harder trying to maintain 48 strokes per minute because I haven't done as quick before, but no, it's good. Happy days. Get changed now, get some food, go and some coaching. I, I choose not to stretch and make my body perform to its maximum, otherwise I would feel that I'll be <coughs> literally leaving George and Sarah in the dust and they'd yeah, probably okay. feel a bit bad. So I slow, I hold myself back. Just yes. so George is just a little bit above me, otherwise he would end up giving up CrossFit. <laughs> yeah. it, it's true. It's true. If, if, it would, if, if I was if I was all of a sudden overnight like that, which I could be, I wanted to. <laughs> he, he would just be like, "Fuck off, it. Let's go. Let's pick someone else to brag shit." <laughs> Wait, you just, so you just admitted your shit? No, you'd pick. You'd, you'd find something that I'm shit at. Oh right. That's what I'm saying. You you quit CrossFit and then pick someone else shit at. Yeah, start being a long start, distance running. Yeah, exactly. You'd start yeah. doing running. Yeah, you'd start doing running again. Like, yeah, <laughs> let's do basketball. Brad short, fat, and can't jump. Damn boys up to something. They just not just bluffing. You don't have to call. I hear my dance like Usher. Ooh. I just found my temp. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's try basketball again. <laughs> oh, yeah, no trampolines. <laughs> Mate, to be fair, I, believe it or not, I used to have people come up to me and say, Are you a bit too short for basketball? Really? Yeah, because I'm 6'1, so technically yeah, it is pretty short for basketball. Yeah, for basketball, it is pretty short. So, session's done. Um, yeah, we're going on. <laughs> we got into training now. Just done some ability drills. Right here, take a look. Hey team, so I'm just using the mic on uh, the MacBook today just to put a voice over some of these stretches, all right? So showing you some of the mobility drills that I'll do before going into squats, especially recently when I'm identifying more and more tightness building up the more and more I'm spending in the office. Anyway. So the first one right here is all about the ankles, all about stretching out and mobilizing those ankles. Now, right here you can see I'm kind of in a half squat in the sense of I've got flat foot with the kettlebell on top of that leg and then I've got a bent foot just supporting the position. What we're trying to do throughout this entire duration is keep the back upright, not arched over. If you need to support your body weight with the hand on the floor at any point, then do so. But you're trying to keep yourself upright the entire time. An easier version of this would be to drop the knee. So my right knee would drop to the floor. It'd almost be like in a lunge position. Okay, keep hold of this for around two minutes. What you're doing with that kettlebell is you're effectively forcing the knee forward slightly over the toe, and the weight of the kettlebell is supporting that push, making it a lot easier. The second one we have here is often referred to as the couch stretch. I first picked it up by a very, very good physio called Kelly Starrett, um, but incredible stretch for the quadriceps, so the front of the thigh. Often build up, get very, very tight. I often refer to them as a powerhouse muscle. Yeah, they come into play with a lot of things, so they do get very tight at times. You're also gonna get a little bit of an added benefit into the hip flexor slightly, but I'm gonna show you in an additional hip flexor stretch in a second. Now, all we're going to be doing is much like a lunge position, really, placing the leg behind us, if we can, holding our body upright the entire time. If that's difficult, then you can have the hands down towards the floor, all right, just to take the pressure off slightly from the quad. But keep the body upright, and if this is easy for you, then squeeze the glutes. Okay, so the variation we have here is exactly the same position. What we're going to do is following the squeeze in the glute, is we're going to raise our arm up into the ceiling, towards the ceiling. And it's going to be the same side as the leg behind us. From here, you're going to lean to one side and it's going to really open up that hip flexor even more so. 
Again, very, very important within the squat. Okay, here's the fourth and final one that I really, really like to do, and it really helps with the hip and the motion in the hip. Um, often you'll find if you're having a pinching sensation in the hip flexor, this will really, really help with that. So, as you've seen, I've placed my leg within the band, and it needs to be a fairly strong band. Okay, distance yourself away from it so you've got some strong resistance on there. You're then going to very slowly push the knee in and back out, in and back out. Okay, once you've done that around 10 times, you're then going to place the hands down to the floor or keep yourself upright, either is fine, and just simply hold the band there, allowing it to pull on the hip. You may have noticed as well as when I put the hip around, uh, sorry, when I put the band around my hip, it's very, very tight to the very top of my hip. Okay. Alrighty, so section A, same as last week. Squat. This time, not 65, 75, 85, 65, but 70. 80, 90, 70. And the rep range is big. Like, I've got to hit five reps at 80%. Um, bear in mind, I hit three reps at 85% last week. So, this is going to be very, very interesting. Just did three reps at the 70, as required, and it felt heavy. So, yeah, it should be interesting. I want three reps at least, obviously. I should be getting five, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, see where we go. How are you feeling, Brett? Ill, but all good. I feel, feel, I feel stronger than I expected. Yeah. I expected to feel quite weak and struggling, but I know felt fine. What's that on the, on the bar now? Uh, 115. Felt like three, felt good. I felt like I had more definitely in the tank, but cool. we'll see what happens when it gets bigger. That sucked a lot. Goes to show that 155 is no longer my one rep max, which is annoying, but goes to show six months of not doing heavy back squat means I ain't gonna be as good. Go on. Yeah, you did it. Oh well, it's alright, it's all good because conditioning is through the roof. Loving it, love training. You ain't gonna get PBs every day. Alright, guys, you're not gonna get PBs every day. Brad over here, on the other hand, let's get it done. Do drop snatch, overhead squat, hang snatch, full snatch, whatever. What's happening is it comes off the hip, drop down to the squat. The right foot wants to turn out slightly more. Um, when I force it to not happen, when I'm under control, when I'm under speed, I can't help it. But when I'm under control and I force it to not happen, I feel it a lot more in the shoulders. And now, I don't know, just today, for some reason, I'm a lot more aware of the internal rotation. I know it's been happening anyway, I'm trying to get over it. But today, I can really, really feel it, especially in this right shoulder. Good. Two more the same, man. Ah, nice. Nice. <laughs> Two, one, go for it. Good. Matching t-shirts today. <laughs> All right, so Brad's starting first. 
We're going into Metcon time now. 21, 15, 9. Power snatch, progressive loading. First set 50%, second set 60%, third set 70%, and a three minute row. Two minute rest between rounds. And uh, yeah, just keep going until you can't do anymore. <laughs> Go on, Brad. How many? 15. Good man. <laughs> Woo! Here he is. Man of the hour. I just looked in my eyes in the mirror and looked at like bloodshot out. That's what CrossFit does here. Anyone think I'm on crack or something? This is crack. CrossFit crack, baby. <laughs> Eating an apple. In between rounds. Got to stay fueled up, yo. <laughs> so, Brad's down there. So, we're just, it's a bit gay, isn't it? No? No. Nah. So, we just finished three rounds, ten, oh, ten pistols. 20 kettlebell swings, I did 32 breaths, 24, into 10 pistols, into three minutes air dime. A 70% effort, which is coming up a lot recently, so we're getting all right at that now. I don't dread the air dime as much as I used to, but it still sucked. Um, and then two minute rest. Me after two rounds, because I was more like 95% on everything, and yeah. like I was gonna pass out. Yeah, this is the <laughs> thing, guys, is working hard is good. Like, working hard, fucking, that's the best thing you can do. I was talking about this yesterday, right? Hard work beats talent. 100% of the time, but at the end of the day, you got to listen to your body at times. You got to push your body to the max, but you go beyond that max, you're gonna end up being sick. You're gonna miss training the next day, the next couple of days, and then who's winning? The other guys training hard in the gym, still training every single day, and you're sitting in bed puking your guts out. So you got to work hard, but you got to know your limit too. Um, training is about pushing those limits, but it's now when to stop as well. Train with someone better than you, but always compete with yourself. That's right. That's what I've learned. That's right. <laughs> you always got to compete against yourself. It's good to train with people better than you, definitely. That's how you progress, if that's you, how you get if better. If you compete against the people that are better than you, you end up like me, demotivated like I was at the beginning, because all I'm yeah, do is trying to it. keep up with this mofo. <laughs> that's it. Just get down, get dirty, compete with yourself, beat yourself every day. That's the back come. That's what Brad thinks about more training. So, this is my new, or one of my favorite meals, done by this beautiful person over here. Especially after a big goddamn squat session. Pie, pie, and more pie. Potatoes, lovely fried potatoes. And you gotta get the veg in there. You gotta get the green beans in there. Now there was a lot more on the plate, but I ate it. I'm still eating now, but I had to say how awesome this meal is right here. Right there. Right there. That's, that's the one right there. Awesome, guys. Good day. Hard training. Two a day. Done it today. Got the 140 squat. PB for the year. Big PB for the year. On reflection, I think that's a new one rep max. I don't think 155, what I set six months ago, is a one rep max. So. I'll be calculating my percentages off that 140. Um, but next week it's 95%, so we'll see if we can either hit 140 for reps or if we can hit 140 for, uh, sorry, or 145 for maybe a little bit more. We'll see what happens. Right now, I'm just gonna rest, I'm gonna chill out with this one. And then uh, back at it tomorrow. Peace team. <laughs>